In the previous module, we have seen the process of discretization of continuous time signals. And we landed up in the fact that the discrete time signal, any discrete time signal would have the Fourier representation something like this. It would be unique in the range of 0 to 2 pi just because this omega is going to repeat after 2 pi. So you can take any range, let it be from minus pi to pi or from 0 to 2 pi. In the range of 2 pi, this Fourier transform is going to be unique and it is going to repeat after the interval of 2 pi. So we have taken a simple arbitrary signal, let it be 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And let's assume that the Fourier transform looks something like this. Now, in many applications of discrete time signal processing, we require the sampling of discrete time signals itself. That means, let's suppose if we need to obtain a signal that is a sampled version of this original signal x of n, like this. So let's suppose I want to retain every alternate sample and I want to simply discard the remaining one. The so we would obtain a signal something like this. So here I have tried retaining the zeroth sample. The first sample I have removed the sample at location 2 I have retained and the next sample I have removed and so on. So we have here we have retained alternate sample and the remaining alternate samples, remaining half samples, we have simply made them zero. So this process is called as sampling. Here the sampling is with a factor of two, just because every alternate sample is removed or made zero. So let's look at the behavior in the Fourier domain. What is going to be the change in the Fourier domain if we do such kind of processing? So let me write that this processing is called a sampling. And the sampling factor, this is called a sampling. And the sampling is by a factor of two. So sampling by a factor of two. So let this be called as a sampled waveform. So let me indicate it that with xp of n. So let this new waveform be x p of n and as we have seen for the continuous case in order to sample this signal x of n you may see that here if you observe closely that this 1 and 3 has to be retained and 2 and 4 has to be eliminated in that sense let's suppose if we have a signal that is 1 at these locations at locations for which we need to retain the samples and let that signal be zero for the location that we want to remove the samples. That means, let's suppose if we have a signal something like this. So this signal is again a train of impulse, which is having these impulses being located at every alternate locations. Let that signal be indicated by p of n and just because this is a train of impulse we can indicate that with del of n minus every integer multiple of this 2 and as i said here the sampling is by a factor of 2 we may have the sampling by a factor of 3 we may have a sampling by a factor of 4 if we have the sampling with respect to the factor of 3 then the first sample and the every third sample will be taken so there will be a gap of two samples in between so in general, if we go for a sampling by a factor of n, there will be n minus 1 zeros in between two consecutive samples. For example, in this case, if we go for a sampling with a factor of 2, there will be 2 minus 1, that means 1 zero in between two consecutive samples. So if we want to obtain this signal, the sample version of the signal, we need to multiply this x of n with p of n. And this p of n is nothing but a train of impulses, that is del of n minus k times that sampling factor, let it be 2. In general, let it be n. So what we need to do is to simply multiply this x of n with p of n in order to get this xp of n. So this xp of n is nothing but this multiplication of 
this x of n with p of n. Now we already know the Fourier domain representation of x of n. If somehow we come to know about the Fourier representation of this train of impulses, where these impulses are located at alternate positions, then using the Fourier properties, we need to simply convolve between the Fourier domain representation of this x of n and p of n. So let's try to find the Fourier domain representation of this p of n. Now this p of n is train of impulses that is repeating one after the other. So this is periodic in nature where this period is 2. So if you want to calculate the Fourier transform, first we need to find the Fourier coefficients, Fourier series coefficients. And we know from the previous lectures that the impulse train is going to have the Fourier coefficients as 1 by n. So the Fourier domain coefficients, the Fourier coefficients of the signal p of n is going to be 1 by n. And just because we need to calculate the Fourier transform, we have to scale this by a factor of 2 pi. So I'll write that as 2 pi by n. So I'll write this as 2 pi by n. Why 2 pi by n? Because 1 by n is the Fourier series coefficients of p of n and 2 pi we have to scale it in order to obtain the Fourier transform. Not only 2 pi we have to scale by a factor of impulses that are being located at integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. So this is there is going to be omega minus fundamental frequency that is omega s. This is exactly analogous to the Fourier representation of impulses in the continuous domain. We have seen that for the continuous time case and similarly for the discrete time case it is going to be 2 pi by n summation k ranging from minus infinite to infinite del of omega minus k times omega s. For the analog analogous case it was 2 pi by t. If we re recall the Fourier transform of the train of impulses is going to be 2 pi by t for the continuous time case. Similarly here as the signal is discrete, we are going to have 2 pi by n. This capital N is simply the, the period, the fundamental period here. That means the samples, the number of samples after which this signal is repeating. And this omega s here is the sampling frequency or the fundamental frequency. Omega s is going to be 2 pi by capital N. So what we have obtained here is simply the P of omega, that means the Fourier transform of this P of n. Now that we have obtained P of omega, we already know what is X of omega. In time domain, X of n is getting multiplied with P of n. So in Fourier domain, this X of omega is going to convolve with P of omega because of the properties of the because of the properties of this Fourier transform we need to convolve the Fourier domain representation of this x of omega and p of omega so let's look at the Fourier domain representation of this the Fourier domain representation of x of omega we already know and the Fourier domain representation of P of omega is going to have the impulses that is going to be present at, you, know, you can see this expression, this P of omega is this del of omega minus k times omega s. This k is an integer and omega s is 2 pi by n. That means the impulses are present at every integer multiple of this 2 pi by n. 2 pi by n is simply the divisions of this omega axis So that means that 0 to 2 pi, this range is divided into n samples and n elements. So if you have this range from 0 to 2 pi 
and let's say if n is 2 we have divided this complete range of 2 pi into 2 two parts so this k indicates the part number you can you can you can interpret it like that so k equals to 0 indicates the del or the impulse being located at omega equals to 0 if k is 1 then the impulse is located at omega minus 1 times 2 pi by n and as the k increases this the part number or the location changes so here in this case in this specific case the capital n is 2 so this factor here is going to be so this factor k time omega s is going to be k times 2 pi by 2 so that is going to be k times pi that means integer multiple of pi and the graph would look something like this so these impulses are going to be placed at every integer multiple of pi you can see that and after 2 pi we know that it is going to repeat so we don't have to bother about the what are going to be the signals after 2 pi because they are going to repeat and as I have, as I have said that in time domain it is multiplying x of n is getting multiplied with p of n in Fourier domain it is going to be get convolved so Fourier transform x of omega is going to be getting convolved with p of omega so these two the first graph is getting convolved with the second one and we know what happens if we convolve a signal with an impulse so it is going to be the same signal being located at the location of the impulse so this graph is going to get repeated at every integer multiple of this pi or where the locations or the s impulses are present so this is due to the property of the Fourier transform the Fourier transform property that says if the two signals are getting multiplied x of n is multiplied with p of n the resultant Fourier domain representation would be the convolution of x of omega with p of omega and of course with the scaling factor that you should not forget the scaling factor is going to be 2 pi so it is divided by 2 pi so if you convolve this signal with this signal so this signal is having the scaling factor of 2 pi by n as you can see from here this 2 pi by n here after these two signals are getting convolved and being scaled by 2 pi what we are left with is 1 by n factor so the resultant signal will have the replicas of x of omega located at every integer multiple of pi and the scaling factor will be 1 by n that means here n being 2 so scaling factor is going to be half 1 by 2 so this is true for n equals to 2 so here n is equals to 2 So you can see that if n is 2, there's, there are going to be two replicas in the region of 0 to 2 pi. So in, in, the, in the range of 0 to 2 pi, there are going to be two replicas. This is the first one, this is the second one, and on 2 pi onwards it is going to repeat. So within the range of 0 to just 2 pi minus 2 pi, just before 2 pi it is going to be two such replicas. If n is 3, there, is, there are going to be three such replicas and so on. This is the effect of sampling of discrete time signals. We shall see more into the other types of operations on discrete time signals in the next module. See you then.